Hello there. My name is Minister Barton Aaron Porter, and today we're going to continue our study of the great book of 2 Corinthians with the 11th chapter. Now, I'm going to be using the good old King James Version of the Bible as I always do. So I encourage you to get your Bibles out and to study along with me. Let's open with a word of prayer. Father God in heaven, we thank you for waking us up to see another day, Lord. We thank you for your mercies that are new from day to day. And we thank you for Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God who took away our sin. So we ask right now that you forgive us for our sins. Wash us in the blood of Jesus and make us clean. Fill us with your precious Holy Spirit, Lord, and cause us to do your will, Father. In the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach, we thank you, Almighty God, Jehovah. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1, the Apostle Paul, being guided by God's Spirit, continues to have written to the saints in Corinthus and for all who are living today. He says, Would to God ye could bear with me a little in my folly, and indeed bear with me. So what does he say? He's saying, I wish to God that you could bear with me a little in my foolishness, okay? And indeed bear with me. He says in verse 2, For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband. Oh, I haven't got you engaged to one future husband. He's talking to the church in Corinthus now. He says that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. Now, the church, spiritually speaking, is the bride of Jesus Christ. This is what he's talking about here. Okay? And he says, I'm jealous over you with godly jealousy. I want you to be ready and I want you to only be faithful to your future husband, Jesus. You understand? This is what he's saying. Verse 3. He said, but I fear lest by any means as the serpent, which is Satan the devil, one of his titles, beguiled Eve, just like he seduced Eve through his subtlety. You see that? So that your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. He says, I'm worried about you, saints. Just like how Satan seduced the very first woman, our mother, Okay, the mother of us all. Adam's wife, who he named Eve. Just like he tricked her, I'm worried that he's going to trick some of you. Verse 4, for if he that cometh, okay, that's the Antichrist, preaches another Jesus or a, a false, that's one of the Antichrist ministers, I should say, because he's preaching about the anti coming of the Antichrist. For if he that cometh preaches another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if ye or you receive another spirit which ye or you have not received, or another gospel which ye or you have not accepted, ye, which means you, might well bear with him. So he said, I'm afraid that if somebody comes preaching another Jesus, you might accept him. And if somebody comes preach, uh, telling you to receive another spirit, you might receive it. Now, if somebody comes with another gospel, you might receive it. And that has happened today. Okay? The church of Jesus Christ has been corrupted. Oh, yes, it has. And that's why you got all of these denominations bickering and fighting over what's right and what's wrong. The body of Christ is a mess! Because Satan has infiltrated it and messed it up. Now, that's not to say there aren't still some in this body who are truly loyal to the Lord, because there are, okay? Anyway, he says in verse 5, For I suppose I was not with behind the chiefest apostles. He says, I know that I was behind the most famous or respected apostles. You know, in other words, I know I'm a Johnny come lately. Verse 6, he says, but though I be rude in speech, this is what they were saying about him. He wasn't actually rude in speech. But though I be rude in speech, yet not in knowledge, but we have been 
thoroughly made manifest among you in all things. So, you know, you know us, in other words, Paul is saying. Regardless of what people are saying about me, you have seen me, you have interacted with me, and you know how I really am, okay? He says, verse 7, have I committed an offense in abasing myself that, I, that ye might be exalted? Have I really committed an offense by humbling myself that you might be lifted up? He says, because I have preached to you the gospel of God freely. I didn't come down there and use the word of God to get money out of you, in other words. He says in verse 8, I robbed <laughs> other churches taking wages of them to do you service. Now, he doesn't mean he literally robbed them. That's just a figure of speech. He said, I constantly went and took up collections from other churches to bring that money to help you. This is what he's saying. He says, um, verse 9, And when I was present with you and wanted, I was chargeable to no man. When I was with you and I needed something for myself, I didn't ask y'all for nothing. Okay? He said, when I was present with you and wanted, I was chargeable to no man for that which was lacking to me, the brethren which came from Macedonia supply. He said, what I needed, my brothers from Macedonia brought down there for me. And in all things, I have kept myself from being burdensome unto you. And, we, and so will I keep myself. He says, I have kept myself from being a burden to you. And I'm going to continue to do that. And that's very important because we got a bunch of so-called men and women of God who are exploiting the word of God for their own financial gain. The Lord has made a provision for people like me to live of the gospel. But we're supposed to take that love offering in moderation. That's why you see at the end of my videos, I tell you how you can financially support me and this ministry. I never tell you how much. And then I moved on. I'm gone. But you got some people who take scriptures like Malachi chapter 3, bring you all the tithes in the storehouse, which has nothing to do with money, and they'll preach that to you and, and try to convince you that that text is telling you to give them a tenth of their money. So this is what he's talking about. Uh -uh. Let's move on. He says in verse 10, as the truth of Christ is in me, no man shall stop me of this boasting in the regions of Achaia. He says, nobody can stop me from boasting of how the Lord used me in the region, regions of Achaia. 11, wherefore? Now he's asking the question, or for what purpose? Because I love you not? God knoweth. He says, so you think I did all that work over there in Achaia because I don't love you? He said, come on now. He said, you don't know. God knows. He said in verse 12, um, but what I do, that I will do. Now, this is very important, saints. Sharpen up for me now. Pay attention. But what I do, that I will do, that I may cut off occasion from them which desire occasion that wherein they both they may be found even as we what is he talking about he's saying I live righteously for God to set an example of what it's really supposed to be about so when the phonies come and you've seen me the real deal you will recognize the phonies okay and I'm just like Paul what I do, that I will continue to do by the grace of God. That I may cut off occasion from them that desire occasion. There's a lot of people who are jumping on a I'm a minister band, on the I'm the God's minister bandwagon. And God ain't called none of them. And they're getting up there and they're putting all their crazy ideals and mess on the internet. All it takes is an idiot with a camera and a YouTube channel. And there's a lot of idiots out there waiting to receive the idiocracy that he, he or she is going to produce. So people like me, we are very rare. We are legitimate ministers of God. We teach his word chapter by chapter, verse by verse, correctly in context. 
it is a not a, there is not a lot of us around. So that's why I gotta keep doing what I'm doing. So if you've seen so many fruitcakes out there that don't know anything about the Bible and they just like the sound of their voice and they just talking, <laughs> you know, and, 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 and then you see a real Bible teacher like me that's taking you verse by verse and explaining, then you're gonna recognize that you shouldn't be watching them. Maybe you might even get away from them. You understand? So this is what Paul is saying here. He says in verse 13, for such a false apostle. You see that? He calls them what they are. Deceitful workers. You see that? Transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. That's what they are. A bunch of phonies. 14. And he says, and no marvel or no wonder for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. See, no big deal. That's what Satan does. Comes pretending to be something he's not. He says in verse 15, therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to their works. You see that? This is why I have videos exposing false doctrines and false ministers. And I do it with the Bible, not my opinion. I just take what they teach and then I take what God teaches. And I say, look at what God teaches. Look at what they teach. Have to do it. Because if I say nothing about the false teachers, like I said, there's some unintelligent person out there, mine, who's like a sponge for garbage. It, mine is ready to suck up something that's incorrect. So that's why I have to do that, okay? Nothing personal. Anyway, Paul says, these ministers who are masquerading as God's ministers, but they're really Satan's ministers, he says, whose end shall be according to their works. Never forget that we all got to go past the judgment seat of Christ. So they're not getting away with nothing. They're going to pay for what they did. Verse 16, he says, I say again, let no man think me a fool, if otherwise, yet as a fool receive me, that I may boast myself a little. It says, don't, you know, don't think of me as a fool, but if you do, okay, now good, I can boast a little. <laughs> he says, verse 17, that which I speak, I speak it not after the Lord, but as it were foolishly in this confidence of boasting. Now, God don't like boasting at all. So Paul says, what I'm about to say ain't got nothing to do with God, but I'll be, dog, I'll be doggone if it ain't true. Okay? And he's going to lay it out in a minute. He says in verse 18, seeing that many glory after the flesh, I will glory also. Seeing that many boast after their flesh, I'm going to boast after mine also. 19. For ye, or for you, suffer fools gladly, seeing ye, or you yourselves, are wise. So he said, you put up with fools all the time because you think you're so wise. Look at this. 20. For ye suffer, or for you suffer, if a man bring you into bondage, or bring you into slavery. If a man devour you, if a man shake up you, if a man exalt himself, if a man smite you or slap you on the face, you put up with all kind of mess that you shouldn't be putting up with, Paul says. It's a fact. He says in verse 21, I speak as concerning reproach, that means disgrace, as though we had been weak, how be it, which means but, where in so ever any is bold, I speak foolishly I am bold also. Now, he's about to lay it out. He said, they want to try to brag and boast about what they do. Okay, now I'm about to do a little boasting now. And even though God don't want me to, but everything I'm about to say is a fact. All right, here we go. He says in verse 22, are they Hebrews? So am I. Paul says, they claim to be Hebrews. I'm a Hebrew too. Are they Israelites? So am I. They claim to be the children of Israel. Paul says, I'm an Israelite too. So what? Big deal. whoop de doo He says, are they the seed of Abraham? Are they the children of Abraham? So am I, Paul says. 23. Are they ministers of Christ, Paul says. He says, I speak as a fool now. I, you know, I know I shouldn't be boasting, but I, what I'm saying is true now. He says, are they ministers of Christ? He says, I am more. <laughs> and he laid it out. 
He says, are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool now. I'm not, I'm not supposed to say this, but it's the truth. I am more in labors, more abundant. Nobody working for God like me. In stripes above measure. That means the scars left from being beaten. Nobody has many scars on their body from being beaten like me. In prisons more frequent. Ain't nobody been locked up for the preaching the gospel as many times as I have, Paul says. He says, in deaths often, nobody has been killed as many times for the Lord as I have. That's what he just said. 24, he says, of the Jews, five times received I 40 stripes, save one. He says, of the Jews, I've been beaten five times. And I got 40 lashes minus one every last one of those five times. 25. Thrice. That means three times. Three times was I beaten with rods. Whoo! Once I was stoned, he said. Thrice. That means three times I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I have been in the deep. I was out in the deep water, not knowing if God was going to spare me for a whole night and a day, Paul says. Ain't none of y'all been to nothing like this. He says in verse 26, in journeyings often, nobody has been sent on as many missions and trips as I have, Paul says. In perils, which means dangers, in dangers of waters, Paul says. In perils, which means dangers, in dangers of robbers, Paul says. In perils, which means dangers, and dangers by the heathen, and dangers by the unsaved folk, in other words. In dangers, you know, perils in the city, in dangers in the wilderness, in dangers in the sea, in dangers among false brethren, Paul says. Y'all ain't done half of what I've done for the Lord, in other words. He says in verse 27, in weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness, none of you have suffered for Christ like me. That's what Paul is saying. Now, I know I'm not supposed to be saying this, but this is a fact. He says in verse 28, besides those things which are without or those things outside of the church jurisdiction, that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches. So, I just named all the stuff that I have to deal with outside, but I also have to deal with what's going on inside of the churches that the Lord used me to establish from day to day. He says in verse 29, who is weak and I am not weak? Who is offended and I burn not? In other words, who's weak in the congregation and I'm not concerned about it? Who's, who is offended in the congregation and I'm not burning with anger over it? I love you. I am concerned for you. I give my life for you, Paul is saying to these saints in Corinthus. He says in verse 30, if I must needs glory, he says, if I must boast, I will glory or boast of the things which concern my infirmaries. He says, I'm going to boast of the things which concerns my weaknesses if I got to boast. He says, in verse 31, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is blessed forevermore, knoweth that I lie not. God Almighty, the Father of Jesus, knows that everything I said is not a lie. Okay? 32, in Damascus, the governor, under, under Aretas, the king, kept the city of the Damascus scenes with a garrison, desirous to apprehend me. He says the governor that was under the king in Damascus had a whole military garrison set up around the city looking for me, trying to capture me. Just little old me. <laughs> Verse 33. And through a window in a basket was I let down by the wall and escaped his hands. Paul says, y'all have not done what I've done. So y'all need to chill out, all right, and quit listening to these people bad-mouthing me and trying to uh, uh, attack my legitimacy as an apostle of Christ. This is what Paul was saying to them. So, if this particular Bible study has been a blessing to you, I encourage you to go to paypal.me slash Porter 
and please make a financial contribution of whatever you can afford to give. Whatever you give will be a tremendous blessing to me and this ministry, and you will be helping me to be able to continue to produce these Bible studies and get the true teachings of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit out. And if you have purpose in your heart that you just want to set it up where a certain amount of money comes out of your account to support this ministry, then I encourage you to go to patreon.com slash Barton underscore Porter and set up whatever amount that you can afford to give to come out on a regular basis. I want you to know when you do that, you become a part of this ministry and you are helping me to be able to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ all throughout the world by way of the internet. And that makes you just as important as the person that the Lord is using to actually do the Bible studies. There is no difference between you and I when you support the ministry that way. So, until next time, this is Minister Barton Aaron Porter saying, may the good Lord continue to bless you and keep you all the days of your life and be sure not to miss the next Bible study when we go into the 12th chapter of this great book of 2 Corinthians. God bless you and goodbye. <laughs>